Okay, let's get started. Good afternoon. My name is Ann Halbrick, and I am the Grants and Programs Senior Manager at the Regional Arts Commission. And I'd like to introduce my colleagues, Chloe Smith. Hi. And Lee Winter. Hello. And um, I'm going to let you know a couple of things before we get started. But first of all, thank you for joining us on this dreary Valentine's Day. And because the only two groans I'll be able to hear are from Chloe and Lee, I'm going to say, um, what did the cave person give their spouse on Valentine's Day? Give up? Uggs and kisses. <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> enough. <laughs> Thanks for that laugh. Um, I also wanted to say that we will take questions uh, after the presentation. Please, during the whole of the presentation, add your questions in the Q&A, and we will get to them as we can. Um, at the end, you'll receive a brief anonymous Zoom survey. So please fill that out so we know what to get rid of, what to add. We want to make sure these are very helpful for all of you. And last but not least, the recording of this presentation will be available on the RAMP website later this week, probably tomorrow. Um, so this is completing the program support application. If you were interested in the artist support application, you may want to bow out now because this is really for the program support applications. And we already said hello. Um, we're going to go over the RAC priorities, the mission and vision, the guiding principles, the core values. We'll go over the program support grant um, what is program support? What is eligibility? What are the applicant categories? We'll go over each of the questions in the application. And, um, and then we'll have frequently asked questions where we've got some that we already know. So we'll go over those. And then we'll be taking your questions as they come in as well. Now, some of this, for those of you that have attended our other webinars, um, You've already gone through some of these first things, but we think it's important to keep going over them to make sure that you're in alignment with what we're looking for for your program support applications. So our mission and vision. As the leading public catalyst for arts and culture in St. Louis, the Regional Arts Commission leverages the power of creativity to strengthen and enrich our community. RAC envisions a full creative life for every St. Louisian. RAC envisions St. Louis as a growing and captivating arts and culture destination. And RAC envisions a community rich with opportunities and resources that promote and sustain artists. Great, our guiding principles are that we invest in the region's arts and culture through our grants, programs, and special initiatives. We believe in diversity, racial equity, accessibility, and inclusion. We build partnerships that strengthen our community. We are passionate champions that support and recognize artists. And finally, we believe every child deserves a well-rounded education that includes the arts. Our core values embody our culture, spirit, and dedication to living our mission. They keep us grounded and help us make good decisions about everything we do. We are passionate champions for arts and culture. We are accountable stewards of the public trust. We are committed to practices that promote diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility. We are socially and civically engaged community catalysts, and we are servant leaders. RAC's mission, vision, guiding principles, and core values are a balance between our passion and interest and the needs of our community. The grants committee and grants team worked hard to be sure that the new grant cycle reflects our mission, vision, principles, and core values, which helps to ensure that our process runs smoothly or as smoothly as possible. <laughs> so what is program support? RAC's program support grant provides project-based support to arts and culture organizations and non-arts profit non-arts nonprofit organizations in the production and or presentation of artistic activities. These ongoing or one-time, that's a typo there, one-time projects broaden and deepen audience 
and community participation and increase access to the arts for visitors and residents throughout the St. Louis region. A project may consist of one or more specific events or activities. It may be part of or all of an applicant's regular season or activities. Applicants that undertake a single short-term project in a year, such as a 10-day jazz festival, could apply for the event or they could identify certain components, such as the presentation of a key artist and the associated activities for their application. Applicants may apply for any or all phases of a project from its planning through its execution. Programs may be new and untested or ongoing with proven track records. Programs may cover a broad range of singular or multiple artistic disciplines. And please note that the program support applicant may request up to $15,000. Great, and now I'll just kind of go over some program support grant eligibility requirements. Um, there's a local focus requirement, which means that the arts programs and projects must occur in St. Louis City or St. Louis County. Um, there's a 501c3 organization requirement, meaning that you're in good status as a nonprofit corporation in the state of Missouri, and 501c3 tax exempt status from the IRS. Um, or be a unit of federal or local government, such as a library, county, or municipal agency. The grant cycle requirement means that all arts programs and projects must occur during the applicable grant cycle, and an organization may submit only one application per grant cycle. There's arts programming requirement, meaning that the proposed program's primary purpose must be the creation, presentation, or utilization of art. And finally, the program period requirement, meaning that the program for which you are applying must take place between July 1st of this year, 2023, and June 30th, there's a typo there as well, of 2024. I'm glad we're pointing out all these typos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't have we don't have the robots doing our presentations yet. Um, you may apply in any of the following disciplines, and those include architecture, dance, design, folk and traditional arts, literary arts, media arts, music, musical theater, opera, presenting and multidisciplinary works, theater arts, and visual arts, or any combination thereof. And then I'll do a brief overview of the application for those of you that are, are already not inside and looking at it yourselves. Um, our first section will be general organization and program information. We'll ask that you upload a board of directors list and a fiscal sponsorship agreement if that's applicable. Um, the second section is cultural and artistic essentials, um, of which there are three questions. The third section is community benefit, of which there are three questions, and then we'll ask that you upload a DEI statement policy or plan um, that is also optional. The fourth section um, is regarding capacity and sustainability, which will also have three questions. It will ask that you upload a budget, an organizational financial statement, as well as organizational health worksheet. And then finally, the supporting documents section where you'll upload your work samples and your critical review, um, which is also optional. And then know that for each of those questions of which there are nine, they are all narrative questions. And just so you know, those narrative questions will have, each narrative question will have a 300 word limit. You do not need to use all 300 of those words, but you have up to that space. And that is generally, it takes up about a third of a page if that page is double spaced and in a 12 point font such as Times New Roman or Arial, just so that you have a sense of how long those responses can be. So let's move on to application question. We're gonna go through all of the application questions and the criteria, and we'll move on to that first criteria, which is cultural and artistic essentials, which will mean the most in the application. So that this whole section is weighted at 40%. So that's a little bit more than the other two criteria, which are both weighted at 30%. And what we mean by cultural and artistic essentials, an organization that produces or presents culturally and artistically significant work that supports a full creative life for every St. Louisian. 
And that application question number one um, is in regards to your essentials. And we want you to provide an overview of the program or programs. And within that, you will say, what is the purpose of the program for which you are applying? And how does the program support the mission of your organization? That review criteria that we ask that you include in that answer um, describes the program resources necessary to carry out the program and the program impact. And that it also conveys all aspects of the program, including clear plans for program execution, such as location, dates, frequency, et cetera. Essentially, the who, what, when, where, and why of your program. Great. And then the second question that is also in the cultural and or artistic essentials category is regarding cultural and or artistic significance. Um, we'll ask here that you explain the program's artistic intention um, and address who are the artists and creatives involved in implementing your program. Um, some of the review criteria for this question are um, that you demonstrate cultural and artistic significance and how the project is relevant to the arts and culture sector and artist. We'll ask that you indicate clear commitment to recruit, engage, and compensate artists with an emphasis on local St. Louis artists. Um, we'll ask that the program embodies excellence of artistic crafts and skills, or at least that you address that in your response. Um, you'll want to address the program um, contributes to innovation and new thinking in the art form and wider culture. And then finally, that the work samples indicate alignment with your project. The next question under the cultural and artistic essentials, um, we are asking you to list out um, what success looks like. And in order to do that, you will probably want to identify and explain the program goals, objectives, and outcomes. We went, if you're not familiar with doing, with, with trying to determine your goals, objectives, and outcomes, we did address that in the program narrative workshop, um, which is listed on our website. So you can go back and look at that or look at the slide deck from that session. So the review criteria for this question include the goals, objectives, and outcomes are realistic and relative to program activities and the planned program execution. And also assessment evaluation efforts are in alignment with the project. The fourth question is the first question under the community benefit section, which will be rated at, or weighted at 30%. Um, the community benefit means that the program demonstrates broad community benefit and contributes to advancing diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility in the community. The fourth application question is regarding audience. We'll ask that you provide an overview of your program's intended audience. Um, the review criteria underneath this question are a consistent audience base, evidence by attendance numbers, community support, and ticket sales as applicable. The <laughs> we'll ask that you convey the program's community impact through qualitative and quantitative data. Examples include numbers of locations, zip codes, neighborhoods, and or participants served. We'll ask that it demonstrates a link between artistic intention and audience experience. And finally, that some level of audience assessment is indicated. The second question under community benefit has to do with diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility. Uh, so we want you to describe how your organization is committed to DEIA and also describe how your program makes intentional efforts to attract and or retain diverse audiences and increase access to the arts for underrepresented individuals and or under-resourced neighborhoods. If your organization has a board approved DEI statement, policy, or plan, we ask that you upload it um, for this section. And if you don't have one of those, please indicate your organization's intentions of developing such a document or documents. The review criteria for this question intentionally and strategically recruits diverse collaborators, which could include volunteers, staff, board, donors, participants, et cetera, and creatives. 
um, develops meaningful collaborations with diverse neighborhoods and communities to provide equitable opportunities to create and participate. Offerings and information about locations where programs are provided are intentionally accessible to all people and available to the public. Locations where offerings and programs are provided are physically accessible to all people. The organization is making progress and reaching new audiences or communities, or is simply reaching more of the same. The organization demonstrates consideration of affordability in offerings, free and or redu reduced price admissions, scholarships, et cetera. And if an organization has an uploaded board approved DEI statement, policy, or plan, it informs the programmatic activities. I'll have a few more things to say about those DEI uh, statements, policies, and plans as we move through the presentation this afternoon. Great. The sixth question um, and final question in the community benefits section is it regarding community engagement. Um, this will ask, how is the work connected to the community, location, or context? Do you have community partners for this program, official or unofficial, and who are they? And in what way do these partnerships inform or support your work? Um, the review criteria that you'll want to address through your answer are that you indicate the program contributes to the vibrancy, diversity, safety, and economic vitality of neighborhoods, communities, or the broader St. Louis region. Um, you'll want to um, demonstrate healthy and or consistent level of participation or community connection. And finally, that you'll indicate community partnerships that help to increase engagement. And then we'll move on to the third criteria in our rubric, and that is capacity and sustainability. Again, that is weighted at 30%. And what we mean by that is an organization that intentionally plans for program capacity and sustainability. This application question um, requests that you have your budget in your budget, budget narrative. So we want you to upload your program budget and provide a budget narrative describing the organization's ability to carry out the program based on factors such as people and financial resources. Essentially, a budget narrative explains how costs were estimated in your budget, and it also justifies the need for the cost in your budget. And that review criteria um, has a realistic and balanced budget and clearly articulated budget narrative. The budget indicates diverse revenue streams. We don't require that you have matching funds, but I think it's really important for program budgets to indicate those diverse revenue streams so that we're not the only money coming in. And then that there's a contingency plan in place to support program completion. I also want to call your attention to if there are words or terms that you're not very familiar with in this whole process, that we do have a glossary that you can find at our REC website that we hope will um, help clearly inform you what we mean by that. And there is one there for contingency plan as well. Okay, our eighth, our eighth question will um, be addressing organizational health. Um, we'll ask that you upli upload the provided organizational health worksheet, um, which you'll see is an upload at the bottom of this question here. And then the review criteria that we'll want you to address in your answer is that the organizational health worksheet conveys ability to maintain operations and programs throughout the program year, and that you indicate an active and engaged board of directors. And then the last question in the application, um, is about sustainability. And we want you to provide a program growth and development statement. Um, so we say in the re review criteria, we want you to address so that the statement complements what is known about the program and the information provided in the program budget, that you demonstrate a plan or desire to implement innovative approaches to organizational operations and funding, and that program planning and development, including goal setting, marketing, budgeting, and evaluation, are appropriate to the scope of the program. Those are the questions um, in the application. Before we get, we're going to cover the frequently asked questions, and some of them um, 
or a lot of questions that we've been fielding as we've published our our quest our guidelines and our questions on the website but before we get into that um lee is here and some of the questions that were being asked about even getting into the application we're going to try to address right now so somebody asked um or said i clicked on the link for the application what do i do now lee do you have an answer for that i do um if you applied last year, then please log in using your username and password and go ahead and start the application. If you um, have not applied for a RAC grant before, then click create account and uh, create your account first, and then it will take you to the application. And hopefully by the end of the week, we will be posting these frequently asked questions on our website. So if you don't get all of this down today and you don't feel like watching this whole video again, uh, please go to our frequently asked questions probably by late Friday afternoon. Lee, I have another question for you. Okay. The, the program support application asks for a tax ID number, but my organization has a fiscal sponsor. What do I do? If you have a fiscal sponsor, please use your fiscal sponsor's tax ID number in that first question um, before you get to the eligibility quiz. Great. Thanks, Lee. I have another question for you. Every time I log in, it makes me go through the eligibility questions and creates a new request in addition to the one I already started. Um, I went back to my application and it was blank. The link for the application is only for starting a new application. If you've already started the application, you need to go to the RAC account page to access any grant application that you've started and uh, or submitted. The account link is different from the application link and uh, both of these are on the program support page of the RAC website. You can reach each application by cl clicking uh, Step one for the uh, application uh, link and step three for the um, account link. And those are both infographics that are about halfway down the page. Um, please only use the application link once per grant cycle because otherwise you're just gonna start multiple, um, opening multiple different applications and starting over. And it's gonna look like when you open up another one that you, none of the stuff that you had already put in was saved, but that's just because you're opening up a new application and starting a new application. So um, the way to tell if you are on the um, application link or the, um, the account link is if you go through the process of logging in and the eligibility quiz pops up, then you're on the application link. If you haven't started a new application, then go ahead and fill out the application from there. But if you already started your application and you really want the accounts page, then just close that out before you start the eligibility quiz and then go ahead and go to the accounts page. Great. That was very thorough, Lee. It's a lot of words. <laughs> it was a lot of words, but you explained it well. Um, I received a grant last year, but when I try to log in, the system is not accepting my username and password. What do I do? Okay, well, this is a quirk of Blackbaud, and unfortunately, we can't do anything about it, but they changed their requirements for their passwords in September of 2022. So a lot of you who already have a login and password, the password might not meet the new requirements. So to access your account, you're going to have to click on forgot my password and then follow the prompts to create a new password that meets the new requirements. And then you'll be able to get in and access your applications from last year and any new applications. Great, thank you. How do I access the pre-application? There isn't any separate pre-application. The pre-application is really a draft of your completed grant application. So please just go to the application link, fill out the application in full, submit it, and then um, any applications that we receive prior to February 20th, which is the deadline, will be reviewed by either Anne or Chloe and return to you um, with their feedback by March 17th. Very good. 
And then I have one more question for you about this part, um, Lee. The contact us link at the top of the page does not work. What do I do? Um, the contact us link at the top of the page is actually for the Blackboard um, technical support. RAC contracted with Blackboard so that we can have technical support for all of our applicants. And so it, that link goes directly to the email for the Blackboard technical support. If you have a question that's not related to the portal and you want to reach out to someone at RAC specifically about questions that only we can answer, then please email grants at racstl.org. Great. Okay, we have other general questions. Um, let's see what we've got here. All right. I'll run through these, Anne. Um, what is the total dollar amount available for program support grants in 2023? Okay, I think I have an answer for that one, Chloe. Um, RAC will provide up to up to $1 million in program support grants in 2023. We're trying to get our coffers back up there to what it was pre-pandemic times, but we're not quite there yet. How many program support grants will be made in 2023? Hmm. That depends on the number of applications we receive. Uh, we have a sense that we will get a lot more than we did last year, and that will depend on the number of those applications received and the scoring that happens um, with the reviewers. Okay, and then how many applications are typically submitted each year? We know that's really hard to say. I will say that in 2022, we received 101 program support applications. 94 of those were eligible, and we actually funded all 94 of those. I don't know that we'll be able to do all of that this year because I expect an increase in the number of applications and we just have that up to $1 million available. So it is, um, it's not a gamble, but we do, that's why we're doing the pre, um, the pre application to help make your applications as strong as they possibly can be. Okay, in terms of eligibility, are non-arts organizations eligible to apply for program support? Chloe, do you know? Yes, as long as their program's purpose um, is art, is the creation or presentation of art. Yes, we will accept those social service agencies, community-based nonprofits, as long as they have a 501c3, they're eligible to apply. And can schools and universities apply for program support? No, unfortunately, schools and universities cannot apply for program support. And well, do you have anything to add there? Yeah, I'd like to say that we are considering and revisiting that in 2024. But right now, um, because of the limited number of funds we have, we are not allowing universities and schools to apply. All right, I've got some timeline questions for you. What is the final deadline for program support applications? The final deadline for program support applications is midnight on Monday, March 27th. And then when will um, we be notified if um, we're, our program support grant has been approved or not? You will be notified between Thursday, June the 8th, and Friday, June the 9th. Okay. And then what if we incur costs before the July 1st, 2023 timeline, or if one component of a program series occurs before then? Mm -mm. All of your costs included in your proposed request must be incurred between July 1, 2023 and June 30, 2024. The next one, um, there, we've gotten a lot of questions about fiscal sponsorship. So what is a fiscal sponsor and who needs one? Chloe, do you have an answer to that? You know, I don't have anything written down here, Anne, but I know that a fiscal sponsor um, is the 501c3 um, that allows you to apply for a program support grant if you do not have a 501c3 yourself. Um, so you do have to have 501c3 status to apply for program support. So a fiscal sponsor allows you to do so. 
You know, I checked our glossary and this is what we say in the glossary. I'm just going to go over okay. that. So, and your answer was completely right on, Chloe, but I just want to give the more formal answer that we have in that glossary. And what we say is fiscal sponsorship is a formal arrangement in which a 501c3 public charity sponsors a project that may lack exempt status. This alternative to starting one's own nonprofit allows the fiscal sponsored project to seek grants and solicit tax deductible donations under the fiscal sponsor's exempt status. It is also an option for one time projects that may be eligible for charitable donations. Please note for RAC's fiscal sponsorship, it is only allowable for program support applicants, not artist support applicants. And then I will go on and say, I know we've had a couple of questions, that when you're uploading those organizational details that we ask for, such as your board list and your financials, that if you're working with a fiscal sponsor, we want you to upload the fiscal sponsor's board list and their financials. However, if you have, um, you know, a a, um, an advisory board or a committee that you're working with and you want to merge that document with your fiscal sponsors board document in one document, you could upload upload both of those in that one document to give us a, a more full look at what you're doing. Um, and then we also feel the same about your financials. We know that if you have a fiscal sponsor, you're probably not doing a balance sheet and that kind of thing. So we need the financials, the two years of financials from your fiscal sponsor. We do need your budget if you're fiscally sponsored, but we just need your organization's financial statements. Perfect. So for a question regarding the pre-application process, what does that process look like for program support grants? Okay, for all first-time program support applicants, we require a pre-application, which is due at midnight on Monday, the 20th of February. That's this coming Monday. So you have less than a week to get that together. You will receive feedback from the RAC grants team to strengthen your application between February the 27th and March the 17th. You may choose to incorporate that feedback into your application and make any other revisions to submit your final application by the final deadline on Monday, March the 27th, which is also at midnight. One note here, on the 20th, the deadline for your pre-application, we expect a fully completed application package, including all uploads and supporting documents. Um, you will complete the pre-application in the Blackboard portal. You're not sending anything to that grants app um, email address or to me or Chloe. It's all happening in that Blackboard portal. And then Chloe, in terms of the budget template, is it possible to add or delete lines and categories in the budget template? Yes, the budget template is designed to be flexible. Um, please add or delete lines and categories as needed. Very good. And then our last question before we go um, into the Q&A, um, what if I don't have a DEI statement policy or plan when it comes to the other program support uploads? Here's what I have to say about that. Don't sweat it and don't make it up as you go along. Um, consider um, convening your board and staff to discuss those plans at a later time, but I wouldn't make anything up. Just say that you don't have one and, and indicate what you're planning to do about that. And let me talk a little bit about what we mean by a DEI statement policy or plan and the differences in those things. So a statement is probably where an organization would start. And many of you may have very fine DEI statements. And that is really a brief explanation of why the organization is committed to diversity, equity, inclusion, and access, and the alignment of that commitment to the overall mission of the organization. So that's the basis. After you have that statement, you might think about a policy. 
And that policy would outline the organization's broad vision for and commitment to diversity, equity, inclusion, and access, and the alignment of that commitment to the overall mission of the organization as defined in that statement and further details about what the organization will do to realize the statement. And then after an organization has a statement and a policy, then the following year or the next phase could be creating a plan. And that plan will outline how the organization will work toward complying fully with policy and evaluating progress on an annual basis. It is recommended that the plan include actionable strategies and methods for measuring progress around all of those key areas. Um, so that's really what we mean. And we will include this information in the frequently asked questions. Perfect. And then finally, we have our contact information. So for any technical questions, that would be like, um, not the EIN number that Lee addressed earlier, but if you have any issues in entering information to the application or if it's not saving the way you're um, trying, um, please contact our grant management system. Um, they will assist with any technical issues. Um, you can email them at ms underscore RACSTL underscore grant making at blackbaud.com. And that is all over our website. So um, if you can't get it here, we have links on the website to email them. And then finally, if you have any process questions, go ahead and reach out to Ann and myself. Um, we'll leave our emails up here so you can get those um, while we go through the QA. Very good. And it looks like our first question, our first two questions are from Sherry. And um, the first question is, what is meant by audience assessment? That's really surveying your audience and having an idea of how they're feeling about the programs that you're presenting. So, um, you know, maybe that's maybe that's a quick email to your audience, the people that you know that bought tickets, um, or maybe you do like when you go to when you go to Cinema St. Louis's. Uh, uh, cinema festival, they will often have like a little punch card that they'll hand out, like what movie did you like best, et cetera. So just figuring out a way to figure out how your programs are being received by your audiences. Um, Sherry's next question is budget narrative reviews, line items, and what I'm not, I'm a little confused by this question, Sherry. So I'm going to ask that you retype it in and um, so that it's a little bit more understandable to us. Um, John asks, many theater companies may not have a balanced budget, as this is the primary reason they are applying for RAP application. However, if a theater doesn't have a balanced budget, but can show it has programmatic support from its parent organization, so that completion of programs won't be jeopardized, does that hurt our eligibility? It's really important to us. A budget, John, is really a plan, a blueprint for what you're planning to do. So I would hope that as you're planning, for that program that you're really planning for both sides of the equation, both the um, income and the revenue, the expenses and the revenue. So that's why it's really important that they, that they balance for this purpose. Um, it may not balance because you may have applicant cash. So maybe that's where you balance it. So I hope that answers your question. Um, if it doesn't, I, you could get in touch with us, but you might also watch that, um, that building a program budget webinar or look at that slide deck to get an answer to that. Um, Thomas asked, are new applicants met with in person after the grant is submitted? I, I wish, yeah, I wish we could, Thomas. Yeah. Um, we don't have the capacity right now to do that. Um, you, after you submit your application, and it goes through the review process. We have outside reviewers that, re that are trained and review the applications. Um, you will receive the feedback from that review process, but we do not meet with you necessarily after that. In a perfect world, we would be meeting with all of you. Hopefully, RAC representatives will be attending your events after we support them, but we don't have the capacity for that right now. Um, Sherry asks, if we do a prison outreach event in outstate Missouri, is that something we can talk about? Um, 
Sure, but for the most part, that programming needs to happen within um, St. Louis City and St. Louis County. Linda asks, can you partner with a program that serves students such as TRIO or Upward Bound um, middle and high schoolers? I would say yes. If that's part of your program, Linda, absolutely. Sherry asks, um, what is the fiscal sponsor's responsibility as far as grant goes? Um, they, they do have a responsibility because they will be writing um, a letter of support to you. So they need to be able to state that they will funnel that money back to the project afterwards and that they're kind of taking taking on accountability as the nonprofit um, for this project. And Sherry asks, um, is the budget narrative an explanation of all costs listed and how we came up with those costs? And the same for income. Yes, you just want to do a basic, um, you know, because sometimes in your budget, you will outline what that is, but we do need that budget justification, maybe something to make your budget more clear to the reviewers. So if you, some of that will be probably pretty obvious, but the ones that aren't as obvious, um, I would definitely do that explanation for. And Jeffrey asks, um, which is a follow up to his question earlier, will the robots actually accept a pre application if it's not complete? Um, will the technology allow a form with blanks? It will not, but you can upload a blank Word document, just a placeholder there, and we'll accept that. Um, we'll know that, you know, you're just getting your documents together for the pre app or for the for the final submission. Yeah, that makes sense. Great. Any other questions? We're going to wait just one moment to see if there are any other questions that any of you have and know that we're here for you. If we don't get back to you right away, uh, please wait, you know, 24 to 48 hours because we have been getting um, quite a bit of questions, both via the telephone and via email. So it takes us a little bit of time to get through those, but we will get back to you hopefully in a very timely, we're going to work work really hard to make sure that we get back to you in a very timely manner. Uh, Chloe, Lee, do you have anything else to add? I don't think so. I feel like we've covered everything. Great. Well, we wish you the best of luck with these applications. We're trying to set you up for um, success. And um, thank you so much for attending today.